Welcome back to Dirt Obsession, everyone. I was recently asked to do an honest comparison between the benefits of side-by-sides versus ATVs, but I'm not going to do that. Riding is always better than driving. That's why this channel has evolved towards helping folks choose the right ATV. We've got a lot of experience with side-by-sides, but no real personal interest. They're just not as fun as ATVs. In fact, they kind of suck. Side-by-sides, from our perspective, have just become a status symbol in a pretentious social circle. You can tell by their ridiculous prices. But there are some additional points to be addressed. So today, instead of a comparison, we're going to tell you how and why side-by-sides suck. And if you want it bad enough, you can suck too. Our specific beef with the side-by-side -side market is comprised mainly of general annoyance. The size of the machines and side-by-side -side culture in general has become a nuisance on the trail. And they did help kill the sport ATV market, so fuck them for that. But there's a bigger problem here, and one that ATV purists are genuinely concerned with. And that is that side-by-sides are changing the industry. They're shifting the priorities of the manufacturers, and they're ruining the trails in the process. OEMs are absolutely eating up the fact that they can flirt with a $40,000 price tag on what essentially amounts to a plastic truck. But soon enough, they're going to be pricing a lot of their market out of the opportunity for ownership. Building ridiculously expensive and unnecessarily big products that your core demographic can't afford? Yeah, it kind of feels like we've seen how this story ends. They're iconic names. Ford, General Motors, Chrysler. Once a monument to America's industrial and economic might. Now, they're going broke. Exciting options on four wheels for less than $10,000 barely exist anymore. And it's become clear that the premium market is the new priority. And ATVs specifically aren't getting much attention anymore. It kind of seems like that's by design, as any manufacturer will tell you that they'd rather sell a $30,000 side-by-side than a $10,000 ATV. So the OEMs continue to advertise power, features, and capability that for the majority of enthusiasts are wholly unnecessary. And in doing so, they've normalized price points and minimum power numbers to the point where people who are new to the market truly don't understand how anything less could still be a legitimate option. Combine that with continuous price hikes, all the way down to the entry-level machines, without adding anything of significant value, and it's easy to see where the OEM's priority lands. So with the changing priorities comes a lot of ridiculously big and ridiculously expensive machines clogging the trails. And that just amplifies the rest of our little rant, like a factory-installed Rockford Fosgate audio system. The majority of the non-side-by-side -side driving community would probably agree that there's very little technique or skill required for the operation of an off-road vehicle that feels suspiciously familiar to your pickup truck. In a side-by-side, -side, skill is replaced by a mix of liquid courage and too much confidence in the cage. And the side-by-side -side driver can only impress his buddies by his willingness to subject his machine to severe beatings. Some may argue that the ease of use is a good thing. It makes off-roading more approachable to more people. But when you can buy your way to ridiculous capability with no skill required, and the misconception that the cage is all the protection that you'll ever need, well that's when people get hurt. But honestly, it doesn't bother me when the herd thins itself. And the problem isn't the approachability. The problem is side-by-side -side culture, at least from our perspective. So let's dig in. The first way to suck in a side-by-side -side is by overestimating your ability. Don't get me wrong, we all appreciate a side-by-side -side fails montage. But most of all of those horrible wrecks are the direct result of inexperience and confusing skill with a willingness to take on a repair bill. I like seeing some carnage as much as the next guy, but to those of us not committing ourselves to the confinement of a steel cage, you're a dangerous liability. Add alcohol, which the majority of side-by-side -side folks seem to do, at least in our region, and you're about as stable as a Karen with a screwed up drive through order. Shut up, can I speak to your manager? So if you want to suck, Make sure to show off your skills to a gaggle of similarly IQ'd henchmen, but make damn sure to do it after a 30 rack of Bud Light so that you don't skimp on the skinny pedal. Speaking of skimping, don't skimp on those tunes either. There's nothing better than country rap thumping down the trail. Side by side bros will drop thousands into a sound system and light whips. I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with some sort of redneck mating ritual. Key to success with the ladies. Meanwhile, their stock air filter looks and smells like a rotting sack of potatoes. Their taste in music is always questionable too, but I will admit it's funny to see a middle-aged redneck slow roll you while thumping some gangster rap, because those side-by-sides go best with a little cultural appropriation. Maybe you can use that for your woke marketing campaign, Polaris. This is for people like you, who welcome every chance to ride, who love a good time, 
and choose to never go it alone. Some consider the room for two an advantage. Since side-by-sides have room for two, you get to bring along your wife or girlfriend every single time you ride. Never, under any circumstance, leave home without her. Saturdays are for the boys, and there's no doubt she's just one of the guys. The kind of love goddess that always got along better with dudes than chicks. But the truth is, that frumpy little psycho is one slug of cinnamon whiskey away from a total meltdown. I understand some couples like to do everything together, but packing your wife or your entire family, for that matter, into a side-by-side just seems wrong. Get them their own machines. Teach them to ride and you'll teach them some independence. There's nothing we love seeing more than a trailer load of machines for the whole family, especially since that trailer load typically costs less than the average four seat side by side. Well, the next way to suck in a side by side is to find the biggest group of fellow side by side enthusiasts you can. And I mean literally everyone. Line them up for the photo op, then most importantly, drive really, really slow for about five minutes or so and pull that caravan over for some socialization time. Oh, but be sure to take your prolonged rest period directly on the most interesting part of the trail so the rest of us can't take advantage of that feature. And don't you dare worry about trash receptacles either. It's called a razor, not a recycling bin. The world is your trash can. Just go ahead and toss those Bud Light cans wherever the hell you please. It only takes them like 250 years to biodegrade, so by the time you get that caravan rolling again, it should be gone. You know what ATVers love more than anything? They love rutted, impassable trails. And that's fortunate for us because side-by-side drivers need 32-inch tires in order to comfortably make it down any trail. And always remember to keep the hammer down on any little trail disruption that causes the slightest variation in throttle application. Need a banshee? There goes your... You're just rutting it out, buddy. There there goes your... There goes our heels. There goes your quad hill. Nancy Pelosi! Those trails don't destroy themselves. The reason you're seeing less ATVs on the trails isn't because side-by-sides are better. It's because suitable trail conditions are unsustainable when you mix cinnamon whiskey throttle with giant rubbers. Seriously, the trails are just getting worse now, and even if the economy can sustain the ever-growing machines, I'm not sure the great outdoors can. Look, we know we're pointing out the few who are poorly representing for the many, but the off-road economy, including the market and trails, are changing. And in our opinion, it's not for the better. Our beef with side-by-sides and the market in general is that they're increasingly trying to add complexity to a recreational activity that for us was always intended to be an escape from the overcomplicated. Information and command screens, Bluetooth communication, speakers that overpower pipes, active suspension systems, and eight-year-long high interest rate loans, these things don't provide for simplicity or longevity and certainly don't allow you to stay in your head for any amount of time. Off-roading is an escape, a partly nostalgic throwback to a time in our lives where we had much less to worry about. Now off-road, like everything else, is being butchered by a crowd of passerbys with more money than sense and no appreciation for the unwritten rules of the ATV community. Lock the fence behind you, don't tear up the fields, and don't leave trash everywhere. But that's my rant on side-by-sides. Now I've got some ATV videos to make.